Hey everybody, so I was just at IMTS, it's a big trade show, and while I was there, I found every entry level machine that I could. There's some really cool machines that I had never heard of or seen before, and I think you guys will find them interesting. My definition of a entry level machine is something that is more capable than a Tormach 1100 MX, but also still under $60,000. For all of these videos, I just kind of ambushed somebody who was there on the show floor. They did not really have time to prepare, so please don't judge any of the machines by the pitch that their salesperson gave. That was my fault, not theirs. I'm recording now. Hi, so I'm Ebony with Cast Machine Tools. We're based in Philadelphia, and one of our more popular machining centers for uh, people upgrading to their first VMC would be the Mini. Uh, if you want to step a little closer, the Mini features 10 horsepower and 10,000 RPMs. This is going to allow you to rip through most things pretty effortlessly. It has a 12-tool umbrella changer. That's enough tools that you're able to have a pretty diverse program without being overwhelmed. Um, it also has co coolant, flood coolant and air through the spindle. Um, and it has the Fanuc OIMF control. This also has manual guide I which is a conversational control. So if you don't know how to write the G-code for what you want to make, you can say, I want to make a bolt hole pattern. And it'll say, what size bolts? How far apart do they need to be? What shape do they need to be? Are they, do they need to be threaded? It'll ask you all the information and then write the program for you as it walks you through. Okay. Uh, the machine's manufactured in Taiwan, but we're based in Philadelphia. Uh, so most service comes out of Philadelphia. We do have an office in Chicago as well that offers service. All of the consumable items on this are non-proprietary and available mm -hmm. from major mass retailers. So that's your electronics, your hydraulics, all of your bearings, all of your switches and latches and whatnot. I don't want to sell parts. I want to sell machines. Um, this has an amazing surface finish. <clears throat> when you wow. put it on cement instead of on carpet, it can make this. <laughs> um, <laughs> One of the other reasons that it's great as a first VMC is that it only requires a 20 amp breaker uh, and it runs on 223 phase. So if you have a dryer outlet, you can plug it right in. Uh, I personally have installed one in a garage. So <laughs> it's a great first step in. It includes a chip evacuation system and uh, can be yours for the bargain price of $49.9. Um, one of the other perks of this machine is that it has the smallest footprint for the travels. There's a fruit company who also uh, comes to this show and has a machine that they call the Mini that is a larger footprint with smaller travels. Um, I don't like Apple. I don't buy machines from fruit companies, but uh, you know, you can do you. The footprint on this is six by six by seven, which means it fits through any garage door. Yep. Um, and the travels are 20 by 12 by 18. So you're able to make something sizable, even if it's not huge. It's great for mold making or um, artistic work, uh, prototyping and whatnot. So yeah, if you're looking for an entry level VMC, she's yours. I just wanted to step in here with a clarification. The lady in that video was a little bit on the short side and it makes the machine look relatively tall compared to some of the other machines that we're gonna see. That machine was actually really low to the ground. I think at max extension, it was like seven feet, which might make it the shortest machine in this whole lineup, which is really interesting to people like me that have door size issues or are in something like a, um, a garage with a lower ceiling. This one would fit the best in that circumstance. Also, the footprint this machine was in was rather tight. I would say it was on par with something like the 1500 MX. So this is our new 1500 MX. It's got an epoxy granite frame, linear rails with 1200 inch a minute rapid speeds, four horsepower spindle with six horsepower peak, made in North America, rigid tapping through spindle coolant, chip evacuation, kind of the whole bit. The idea for this is for people that start off with our smaller machines, like the 440, three quarter horse machine, six and a quarter by 10 inch working envelope, all the way up through the 770, 1100. Once you outgrow those, you can step into this machine and get into like full production automation capabilities. The pitch the Tormat guy gave us was a little bit short here, but if you're interested in more about that machine, 
I have a video where we make some parts on it. And I also have a video where we do a complete teardown at the factory. So we get to see all the kinematic systems, the casting, the electronics, everything. In this next video, we had some audio issues. Again, this was my fault, not the sales guy's fault. So I'm sorry about that. You can always skip it if it's absolutely unlistenable. Hi, I'm Steve Sherman with Miltronics. And here we have the VK4. It's a fully programmable three axis machine. We've got 40 paper spindle, so we use the same 40 paper tooling as our machining center. We've got the same control as our machining center, capable of uh, conversational programming, NC programming. Uh, we're showing a demo with a Renishaw probe just to highlight some of the capabilities of the control. So you can also run it as a manual machine, right? Yep. Right now we're running it like a fully programmable CNC. You can disable the automatic and run it as a manual build and your control will be your digital readout, the knee raisin, and this is one of the few machines that has a uh, Z-axis quill. Okay. So fully programmable. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the uh, Herco VM1. This is kind of a retro throwback to the VM number one machine that we had up until about 2012 when we rebranded that VM1 became a VM10 and that the VM1 itself was such a popular machine that we went back and offered it in the new skin with the new control, but it's the same travels, the same tool capacity and much lower price where the original one began. Um, 16 tool, automatic tool changer. It's a big plus spindle, Cat 40. It is um, 8,000 RPM spindle. Um, the travels are 23 by 14 by 16. Um, pretty capable machine. It's become pretty popular since we re-released it. And uh, it has the same control on it as all the Hercos do. So all of our machine up line in the Millings uh, line has this WinMax control. It's, we call it the Max 5. That's the console that you see, and that is available on every mill that we have. It's the same software. Um, we also have a very, very similar version on all of the lathes. It's pretty much the same software, or same control there as well. So it'd be very easy to step up, up to something bigger after you've learned on this, Absolutely. or gotten started on this. Absolutely. Once you've learned this control, you know the control on all the machines. Even going to a lathe, it's the same layout, it's the same procedures, it's the same screens. So uh, lay the user going to mill or the other way around, they feel very comfortable in that environment. The VM1 is probably the most expensive machine in our lineup, at least once you option it out. It's probably also the most capable. For me, Hercos were very tempting because their support is based out of Noblesville, Indiana, which is about a half an hour drive from me. Unfortunately, they did not fit into my shop. They are too tall. Next, we're going to go into the Haas machines. Uh, the Haas sales guy was not interested in showing us the full suite of his entry-level machines, but they also have the TMOP as well as the DC series machines. There's a lot of good info out there on all the Haas machines, so I think it's fine that we omit those from this list. I'm Alex with Haas Automation. We're standing here in front of our mini mill. This is one of our cheapest entry-level machines. Oh, excuse me. You're fine. <laughs> Small enough to fit in your garage. It'll even run on single phase. We've got it here with a compact APL, so super cheap way to get into automation, learn the ropes, running lights out, make production stuff in your garage. This is the machine for you guys. Come check it out here, IMTS 2024. Let's go. So I don't think we ever actually said it out loud, but this next company here is Dynapath, and they have a interesting little knee mill with a basket style tool changer. It's pretty cool. I'm sorry that it's out of focus. I did not notice that my camera decided to not focus and the screen on that thing is about the size of a postage stamp. So I had no way of knowing until right now. But the machine's interesting. Whatever you are. So I'm Stu, a journeyman mold maker of 40 years. I started in my garage when I did my own shop. You name the place in Milwaukee, I probably worked there. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, I have three Dynapaths in my garage and it, I just started doing sales for Dynapath this year. This machine has a new tool changer system on it. This is called our Spider. For you guys working in your garage, that's where I started. This is the machine right here. They just up the control. This control can do so much for the price. It's not even funny. You can do rigid tapping, thread milling. 
it'll engrave, you can bring DXF files in. You can also modify those DXF files. If you don't like conversational and your G-code guy walks up and has to do a change, he can hit the button and it goes into G-code. So it's a very versatile machine, all for under $40,000. You can't go wrong. We have a lathe in the back here for 54. That's a little more for you guys working out of your garages, but you know, it is what it is. It's all in the control is the, is the, the deal. You got 40 taper machines, cat 40 tapers. There you go. All right. On this next one, we had some language communication barriers. So my buddy Jamie from JSpec Engineering, who runs a sort of similar machine, stepped in and played sales guy for the company. Uh, this is the Optima F50. F50, oh, sorry. This is the Optima F50. It's an entry level CNC machine, A tool ATC on it, BT30, 10,000 RPM spindle, uh, quite compact, weighs 1,900 kilograms, so relatively easy to get into a small space. Uh, 15 meter a minute rapids, and yeah, that about covers it. Siemens controller, I believe, comes standard on it. What else do you want to know about it? Are you able to say about how much one costs? Uh, for the local in American price, yeah. I think it's around uh, 40,000 US. Around uh, 40,000 US. 40,000 US. Okay. okay. Then, yeah. Price? Okay. Yeah. So going price around 40,000 US. Uh, not bad bang for the buck. Uh, nice compact little machine. We're going to come and have a look there, Joe. Yeah. It looks like a nice. What's the spindle? Uh, it does 10,000 RPM. And what are our, what are our travels here? Sorry, uh, 330 by 220 by 320 travels. So just over 12 inches by 9 inches by uh, 12 inches. Right. What's the weight? Uh, 1,900 kilograms. Then I have one last machine for you. Now, again, on this one, Jamie was in plain host. The person we were talking to was not a salesperson. They were more of a like a technical applications engineer and a little bit less comfortable on camera. So Jamie stepped in to help make them feel more comfortable. The sticker price on this one is actually kind of shocking. Tell us about the machine, what, uh, what offerings it has at the really good price points. Uh, so here we have the smart machine tool, the mini. Um, just an all around 40 taper machine we offered. Uh, it's new, this IMTS. Um, comes with a 24 tool changer. Travels are 23 by 17 on it. Yeah, it's, it's got 12,000 RPM spindle, 20 horsepower. Uh, you mentioned it as a chip auger as an option. Um, I see it's got plugs up there. Does it come with a fourth axis option as well? Fourth axis option. Okay, that's optional, included. obviously not at this price. Right, it's all pre-wired for that. Okay. Very nice side mount tool changer I see. I uh, see so you've been uh, drilling some small holes in this thing. Yeah, so we got a one inch insert drill going in there dry at seven inches a minute, 1500 RPMs. Yeah, it seems like a, a real tank of a machine. It's very good, very yeah. rigid. Seems like a very good value proposition. How yeah. big is it? Well, you could fit it in a garage. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, what is the weight on it? Uh, the weight. <laughs> The weight's going to be just under 9,000 pounds on it. Oh, so it's a, compared to some of the other machines we looked at, it's quite a heavy, heavy machine. Yeah. It's a little bit on the tall side, but that's what a saw's all for. You cut a hole in your roof and you can make right. it fit. Uh, it's running a Fanuc, Fanuc one of the control. newer Fanuc controllers that seem pretty intuitive to run. Yep, OIF plus. So. You've got all your, your standard macro programming and all. Manual guide eye. It does have a Renishaw. Okay. Does that on. come standard? Does it come with a probe standard it, it or does not? not. It, does it, not. That would okay. have to be an option added. But the um, Renishaw stuff's already in the back end for you if you correct. decide to upgrade. What okay. Uh, yeah. What are your power requirements on this? Um, it's just 220. Uh, oh. Yeah. Just 223 phase. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, That's all right. Used to 383 phase oh, back home. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How many? Uh, what? How many kilowatts? Uh, it's so, like 35. Okay. So it's a bit on the higher end from what we've been looking at, but. Still manageable. Yeah. Uh, it's with, somehow also on the lower end of price. Yes, it's a very, very good value option. Yeah, like, high end of capability, low end of price. Yeah. Is super impressive. Like yeah. the 35 kilowatts is a bit on the high end. Like you're going to need a. What is that? It's a hell of a braking. You need like 300, 300 amps. Oh no, no, 230. So it's a 15 amp? It's probably like a 50 amp braker. Yeah, a 50 amp, 100 amp breaker somewhere around there to run it. But other than that, it seems yeah. to have all the. All the amenities. It's got your wash gun, your air gun, 
And uh, on the sides, it looks like it comes with tool rack. Tool they don't rack. charge extra for it. Yeah, and the door is open too. Okay. And they are the full width of the wide travel. Okay, uh, so you can actually stick stuff out and not worry about it correct. hitting. I've run into that problem before. Yeah. But yeah, it's a really, really hefty little machine. You may notice that notably Sile is missing from this list. That is because they did not attend IMTS, but they are worth checking out. Again, I've done some other videos where I talk about like Tormach versus Sile versus the Haas DC machines, but Sile's start at about $30,000 and well, you can make them about as expensive as you want, but they are pretty capable and generally a pretty good bang for your buck. So go Google those if you want one more company to look at. But thank you for watching. I hope these were helpful.